Hey, this is Miss Callahan with Cellular Processes. The next thing we're going to go over is the Cellular Processes. Please remember homeostasis. I don't know how many times I have to tell you that, guys. Homo means the same. So, in other words, homeostasis means a stable or balanced internal environment. Three words. Homeostasis means these three words. Stable internal environment. We also have a passive transport that we went over. And an example of passive transport is osmosis. And osmosis is just the movement of water in and out of the cell. And active and passive transport all try to maintain homeostasis inside your cells. So, active transport requires energy. Passive does not. Passive is like osmosis. It's like, and osmosis is a, a type of diffusion. It's just the water going in and out due to what the concentrations are in and out of the cell of stuff like saline, which is salt, salt water, okay? Active transport is sodium potassium pump. So if you hear anything about a pump or going against the concentration gradient, you should think of active, active transport. With the concentration gradient would be passive because it does not require ATP, which is our energy. There's different types of solutions that you can be in. So for example, our blood maintains, or it tries to maintain this isotonic solution. In other words, the concentration of stuff all outside is also the same as inside, and the water is gonna just equally go in and out. If you do hypertonic, there's more solutes on the outside than there are on the inside of the cell. So water is, and water moves, when I, when I ask you about this, they're going to ask you about water moving. Water is going to go out to this solutes, because that's what it wants, and this cell is going to shrivel up. A good example of this is when you get a lovely dehydration headache. If you get dehydrated, your cells are going to start shriveling a little bit, and your body is going to let your brain know that something's wrong, you're going to get a headache, and you know, you need water. You need a lot of water. Hypotonic is the opposite. You've got a lot of solutes like salt inside the cell than in your outside of your cell. So the water is going to go in the cell and it's going to expand this cell too much. The cell's not going to be used to expanding that much and it may burst. So this would be, you know, overhydrating, overhydrating. And I, I've never really known of anybody drinking way too much water and, and getting this hypotonic solution in their bloodstream, but I'm sure it can happen. Uh, we also talked about our cellular membrane. Please remember that the cellular membrane is also known as the lipid bilayer. It's also known as a plasma membrane, fluid mosaic model, lipid bilayer. It is semi-permeable, meaning things can come in and out of the cell depending on what the cell needs at the time. We then talked about, real quick, the cell cycle. And please remember this lovely little picture. I know you can't see it, but you've got it in your notes or you've got it in a picture or something I've gave you. I've given you this, I don't know how many times. Um, it goes, this dark spot is all interface because the cell maintains interface for the majority of its life. And then all of a sudden it goes through mitosis or if you're at sex cells, meiosis. So during this interphase, you need to remember that there's growth one or they call it gap one. S phase, which is synthesis. And remember, if you synthesize something, you're making it. So during S phase, we get DNA replication because we're making extra DNA. And then you get growth two or gap two. So during these growth phases, you've got different things going on, but mainly um, it's going to grow twice the size um, that it was before because it's getting ready for a cell division. And then you're going to get your actual mitosis or meiosis, but we're going to go over mitosis first. So mitosis, you start off in, in uh, you start off in prophase. Okay, so we don't include interphase in mitosis because it's not part of mitosis. It, it happens before mitosis. So interphase, this is be a picture of interphase, and then prophase. And I always think of metaphases. They meet in the middle. M for meet. Anaphase is a part. So I think of 
the A in anaphase is apart. In other words, chromosomes are pulling apart. And then you get your telophase. And I think of it looking like the the upside down phone. I don't know. That's just me. You can you can remember it how you want to. And then that's all of mitosis, those four stages. And then you get cytokinesis, where you get two new daughter cells. And in mitosis, you get two identical daughter cells. Remember, meiosis, you get four non-identical because there's crossing over. And plus, me, meiosis has this, and that's how I say it. I just I try to remember me, um, but of course, it's not how, it's not exactly how it's pronounced. But for learning purposes, in meiosis, you get this PMAT or prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. I call it PMAT one and two. So you go through this twice. That's the reason why you end up getting four non-identical cells and they're haploid. In mitosis, you get these diploid cells. Okay. We also talked about photosynthesis. Please remember the chemical equation for photosynthesis. So we start out with carbon dioxide, plants do, and they take up water, carbon dioxide, sunlight, and they produce oxygen and glucose, which is C6H12O6. That is photosynthesis. It occurs in the chloroplast, and there's two types of phases, light and dark. Okay. Please remember that just because it's called dark reaction does not mean it occurs at night. It just occurs throughout the day. It just means that sunlight is not required for that phase to occur. They produce the glucose that other organisms require for growth. Then we talked about cellular respiration. Going back to photosynthesis, you need to remember that the chloroplasts have these stacks of thylakoids. And that's where your chlorophyll is contained. Cellular respiration, the mitochondria is a little different. They have these folds, these cristae folds for extra surface area because you want to produce as much ATP as you can. And I think of mighty mitochondria, so he's got muscles there. Now, it's just the opposite, guys. Photosynthesis equation is just the opposite of the cellular respiration equation. It's just different energy sources. So in cellular respiration, you got oxygen. We breathe in oxygen. Breathe in right now. You're breathing in oxygen. We take glucose in from food, C6H12O6, and we produce carbon dioxide for the plants. And we produce water. I mean, if you put your hot breath on a windowsill, you're going to get some condensation and get some water there. And we also produce ATP. So the difference between these two chemical equations is that photosynthesis, they take in sunlight over here, um, but we actually produce ATP out of it. So not out of sunlight, but we produce ATP out of these two things, oxygen and glucose. So 36 to 38 for aerobic respiration. And hopefully, you know, you maintain aerobic respiration pretty much your lifespan. Anaerobic respiration, you only get two of these guys, only two ATP, because you don't have oxygen, okay? And it's not very suspicious. So yeast, yeast do these. And that's where we get our alcohol from. So according to what you give the yeast is according to what you're going to get. So yeast, like I said, is anaerobic, and they produce two, two ATP. Also, lactic acid, which can happen in your muscles if you, you know, you run a marathon and you didn't practice any, um, you're going to be hurting because you're going to get a buildup of lactic acid from your muscles not having that oxygen that they require. All right.